everybody. I'm Nikki, I'm from Gracie's House. I'm based in the UK and I'm a brand ambassador for Redesign with Prima. So I'm out of breath because I've just realised that I hadn't brought something down that I needed to. <laughs> so I've just run up the garden and back again. I'm severely unfit. Uh, thank you for joining me. I can see that I've got lots of people joining me on Instagram, which is brilliant. And I can see somebody's joining me. Patricia, hello. You're joining me on Facebook. Oh, I can see a couple more people. Good. So it's all working. I'm just going to pop one little comment in on Facebook if it works for me. It's not going to work for me. Okay. Never mind. Bob, hello, my darling. Okay. Right, I'll get my breath back. <laughs> Laurie. We're going to be using Lush Floral 2 today. So this is one of the big bad boys. Hi from Las Vegas on Instagram. Hi Joe, Laurie, hi, hi, hi. Um, yes, Wilfred, hi there, how are you? You're over in France, aren't you, I think? Lush Floral 2, one of the big um, transfers. So this has got six, six sheets of transfers. Sharon, hello! Fancy you joining me as well, goodness me. Erin, hi. Good, I've got lovely, lovely peeps all watching. So, can you tell I'm still out of breath? <laughs> Ridiculous. Okay, so I've pre-cut my pieces. This one's going to have a little bit more of a cut. Um, I'm doing something a little bit different. You guys know me by now. Those of you that have been watching me, I love these little half moon tables. They come in, they go out really quickly. So they just work really, really well for me. Rachel from Boston. Hi there. I've got Maria from, or Marie, sorry, from Palm Springs. Lovely. Anywhere you're watching from, um, if you're on Facebook or Instagram, do as everyone else is doing, pop me, pop me a hello, tell me where you're watching from. It's lovely to know all the places that are tuning in. So I'm usually quite one for a clean finish, maybe a little bit of distressing. I thought we'd go for a really textured finish. So I'm just gonna take this off so you can see what I've done. I've been, I've been uh, experimenting with salt wash. Now, and the, on the front, and then just around the corners, can you see? Hi, Alicia. These are, I'm just gonna show you the molds that I've used. So we have Thornton Medallion. So that's that main piece on the front, and then these ones to the sides. And then right round on these edges are the little pieces from English Garden. So not that main center piece, but these flourishes here. Karen, hi from Long Island, lovely. So that's the two molds. So what I did was I gave this a really good clean. I gave it a really good scuff sand. I made my molds, but I had my mum visiting at the weekend. So these actually cured a little bit more than I wanted to. I used um, a fast cast resin, so it does cure pretty hard. But if you pop them in the microwave for about 30 seconds, they give you just a little bit of, they, they, you know, they're not like, um, they're not like really flexible, but they give you a little bit of flexibility and it made me able to glue them with that slight curve. So I did that and just clamped them while the glue was setting. Then I did a base coat of my salt wash mix with Vera at the, ba Vera at the Ballet by Paint Couture. So can you see there's some pink, pink coming through from underneath, very subtle. I went really, really crusty. I put a lot of um, I put a lot of the salt wash product on the edges and around my mold. So there's a lot of texture here. And then I went a bit more uh, lighter through here. And then on this shelf underneath, it's quite light, a little bit heavier on the edges and the legs, it's a little bit lighter, but I went heavy on the texture around the edge and then around my mold, particularly that front one. I wanted it to look really crusty and I love that word, crusty. <laughs> And like you found it in a barn. But then I thought, oh, I want to transfer. And I wonder how um, transfers apply to, we always talk about it being a nice smooth surface, it going lovely onto glass, things like that. And I thought, I wonder how it's going to go on. So I did my Vera at the ballet and I knocked back the real sort of pointy peaks. And then I've done a mixture. The top layer is um, Charlotte Grey and some Peace. So that's giving me that sort of a stone effect. And then I knocked, and then I sanded back again, just to reveal those bits of pink. So that's how we've got to where we are. And 
but I really wanted to do like a distressed, I don't want this transfer to look perfect. So this is all about making everything look aged and if it's been sat in a barn, like I said, for ages. The great thing about using paint couture is it, it's got a lovely finish to it anyway and the transfers like paint couture. So I'm not scared that there's gonna be a problem with the texture and the um, transfer adhering. <clears throat> And also I didn't see a great deal on, on kind of adding a transfer to a textured finish, maybe adding texture afterwards. But this is, so this is how my, my brain was working. So I'm gonna pop this one here. Like I said, I know this is a dark color. I'm going for a real knocked back distressed look. So we're gonna add maybe a wash of paint afterwards. So this is gonna be a bit of experimentation. Um, I know this is gonna, Fit well onto the paint it's the it's the just making it look aged that is is going to be the experimentation side of things so i've relatively cut it to to give me the you know show a bit of my crustiness around the edge but i know roughly where i want these pieces i've got my my transfer stick that comes in every tube i've also got the redesign with prima transfer tool so i quite often will interchange between the both of these and this is also great if you're looking at um, a piece that would have distressing or perhaps you've had an accident with a transfer, it's not rubbed down properly, you've, looked, you've missed a bit. This is a kind of a way to you can retrieve that. Make it look like it's on purpose, that you, it, it's not an accident. So distressing back. The transfers don't have to remain with a perfect finish. Obviously they have a place and a lot of my pieces have that really good sleek finish. This is a bit new for me, distressing the transfer itself. I quite often just do a little bit of light distressing on my paintwork. But I was really interested to see how it would apply, like I said, over a really textured finish. And you're going to have to really, you know, you may have to work a little harder because it's not a smooth surface that you're applying it to. But that doesn't matter. If as long as it gives us the look that we're aiming for, I don't mind a little arm workout. So like I said, I'm just having to work a little bit harder. As long as you can get an edge started and then you're away, look, there we go. I've made sure as well that after my sanding, I've wiped away all the sanding dust because that would be your only obstacle as well. If you didn't clean up the dust from sanding the salt wash back, then your transfer would stick to that rather than, um, rather than your paintwork or whatever finish your project. So you really want to make sure that you've got that dust away. <clears throat> and that your transfer isn't gonna to stick to that. That's the same with any, any project, but particularly with this, because there's going to be a lot of dust left behind. Now this bit here is particularly textured, so I'm really gonna to have to get my, I might get this one, because it's just got a slightly thinner edge, which means I can get it pressed down a bit harder. And there we go. And there may be a few little air bubbles because we've got a raised surface. Again, when we burnish after the application and we've removed the top sheet, um, we can press down a lot of those air bubbles. But again, I'm not looking for a perfect finish on this one, so I don't mind so much. As long as it's adhered, I, I'm not too worried about this project being a perfect finish. realised I don't have a clean burnish. I think I've got one to hand. It's fine. I'm just checking I'm not missing any comments. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop them into the comments. I will do my best to answer them as I go along. Hi, Zemin. Um, yeah, but I haven't seen any questions as yet. So I've used salt wash in this project, you know, you could use any, um, any other texture 
additive. Um, Paint Control do a texture additive. That Well, they do two. They do crust and they do embossing medium. But I, um, I wanted to retain my paint colour on this one. And those two just slightly lighten the colour, so I went for salt wash. But the two products play really nicely together. And actually, the transfer's going on not really without with, with any problems. Like I said, you just have to be a little bit more wary of the edges as you're going along. Perhaps, I'm just making sure. There is a question. How much time is it taking in total? For the whole project or just the transfer? Um... Um, I'm trying to think how much. Probably a little scuff sand is five to ten minutes. The first paint coat um, with the salt wash, maybe 15 minutes. Let that dry. And then the next one, maybe another 20 minutes. And then however long the transfer will take. So it's not, you know, you can you can turn these table tables round in um, quite quickly which is another reason I, I favour them, but the fact that they sell, they generally sell quite quickly for me is obviously a bonus. And you can be really, really creative. And also if there's some techniques you want to practise or, um, you know, a colour combination that you want to practise, it's a nice way to see if, if that idea works because it's not too big a piece and you can see. I'm just going to get my cloth. So I like to um, I like to burnish with a microfiber cloth. I start from the middle. I work my way out. I can really feel the texture as I'm burnishing. So we talk about burnishing, and that's just going over again once the top sheet has been removed. Tend to go out from if you can when a big piece like this. Go from the center and work outwards. The intention is to make sure that all your little edges of the, ad, um, the adhesive is all rubbed down properly. And if you ever see people talking about the halo, that's why. Not on a light colour, it's very, very un not noticeable, but on darker colours, it's more noticeable. But burnishing well will lose that for you. Okay, so that's our first piece. Let's get our... I'm going to pop this one on. Oh, I've got lots of heart faces in, on Instagram. Lovely, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm going to pop this one about here. Let's just make sure. I am layering these ever so slightly as well. Because I didn't want there to be masses and masses of colour. I wanted... Let's pop you... I think about there. So I'm just going to fold that edge. And then cut it. I wanted this to be quite subtle, but then, like I said, we're going to work maybe with some colour washing once I've applied the transfers. And of course, I mean, almost no project is complete without some decor wax. So I think we might be busting some decor wax out of the mould. But just, it's crusty, we're going to keep it crusty. It's just for a little pop. I'm going to pop him there, so I'm just going to get those two out of the way again. I have him right up against that edge with the green. Okay, we're gonna go there. And the colours in this are just beautiful, but we're gonna knock them back just a little for this particular piece. I'm gonna say this is one of my favourites, but I'm beginning to think that I say that on pretty much every one. <laughs> Anything that I've missed on the comments, particularly on Facebook, I will come back and answer them after the live is finished. On Instagram, if there's anything I've missed, once it goes to IGTV, the comments disappear. So if I haven't answered you, if you if you really need a, something answered, once it's gone up to IGTV, then pop a comment back on again for me, if you can. I, I do try and keep an eye on everything. Hi Jabbar, I'm hoping I've got that pronounced right. I do worry. 
don't pronounce things right. Claudia, I'm going to have to double check that one because it's not in English. Unless there's some, somebody last week, I think, translated something for me, which was brilliant because, because I didn't know what it said live. So that was great. <laughs> Am I going to be lucky again this week? So we're just doing the same here. I'm making sure the edges are down. And once you've got an edge, you can just start gently peeling that top sheet back. Don't go ripping it off in case you've not got complete adhesion somewhere. See like that, I'm lifting it up there. Can you see? That's not stuck yet. This bit is, that bit's not. So if I'd have ripped that quickly, you run the risk of ripping, tearing your transfer, but also it possibly folding it back on itself. And we don't want that. We don't want that kind of accident. We want your transferring experiences to be happy ones. very warm and sort of muggy, humid today. How's everybody's weather where they are? Super, Shikuti creation, super, thank you. It's looking cute already. I think we're going to take it up a level with some of our other work that we're going to do today. Okay, so um, again, I'm getting my cloth. I'm just going to start from the middle. I'm going to work it out. just so that we have contact across everything. And our edges are nicely adhered. Okay, lovely. So we're gonna to go to our biggish piece now, making sure. Patricia, humid and rainy with you. Yeah, it kind of tried to rain earlier when I was walking Gracie back from school. It didn't quite happen. Okay, so I've trimmed this off already. This is a join here on this piece, on this design. So I've trimmed it back. I've cut down to remove that flood line on the way it prints as best I can. But again, on this particular project, I don't mind too much because we are going to be distressing it back anyway, so I'm not too worried. Dear Bloom, you've got rain on and off, muggy and hot. Yeah, and someone's just said that flip glow, beautiful day. It is, it's just, it kind of flips between being really, really nice and sunny and just a bit muggy. I'm gonna start with this piece. No particular reason, I just, I just am. Let's, let's go. Okay, so I'm gonna stand up to make sure that I've got my piece lined up for some reason. It's something that I do quite often. There we go. Oh, I'm really pleased how this is coming along already really think it's looking pretty. I hope you do too. And I'm actually, I'm actually really pleased and pleasantly surprised, like I said it was experimentation, that it's not hard work to add it to this textured surface. So there we go peeps. If you haven't done a textured surface before and you fancy it, it works really well. Checking, I'm not missing anything. And what's everybody doing this week? What are your projects? Are you transferring? Are you painting? Are you planning on? If you're using a transfer this week, what are you using? I find it, I always find it really interesting and I find it it, there's almost like trends on what people are using or what, what are you influenced by at the moment. So we're also doing a little bit of layering going on here. Diane, very pretty, thank you. Gem of the heaven, oh what a lovely, lovely um, profile name, thank you. lost my train of thought now. What was I saying about being inspired by? I can't remember. 
I was saying about layering, wasn't I? Yeah, so we're doing a bit of layering. Occasionally, you might find you have to work harder on those spots as well. But I've never had too much of a problem. Some people say they have to put a, a top coat in between. I've never, ever had to do that. But if you are struggling, then a layer of top coat may help you. You're doing a sign using vintage rustic. Oh, Francie, that's lovely. Oh, nice. What colour are you doing it over? I tried to make tunes this month. Tunes or tons? Tunes? Cartoons? <laughs> is that, is that um, auto-correct? As as sent something strange, tombs. You see, we. I'm just working here now on the bit where we've layered, and there's no big deal. There's a bit of an air bubble come through there. I'm just going to scrape that out. But it's it's coming off that that um, that layered bit is coming up fine. So do you draw the cartoons? That sounds interesting. Or do you, do you use, um, you know, do you do them on furniture or? Cute. France, it was going to go over a cream color, but I don't love it now. It's on. You're rethinking. Oh no. Could you put a wash or something over the top of it or like mm. Mm. or maybe add some like layers and stenciling perhaps in a different colour. Alicia, you're turning some old cigar boxes into jewellery boxes and you use some sea texture on one. Plan on trying this technique. Honestly, do you know what? It's the most fun because you just it's so genuine looking because you can just make it so random. Um, and it's, you know, there's no uniform uniformity to the, the finish. I really, really like it. I can see myself using this a lot. So I'm just getting to the end of this piece. This is where I always say be careful because you can, you can peel it and if you peel it too much and that folds back, then you've lost that, that section. So always make sure from all of the angles that you've got your piece. In fact, what I'm going to do on that edge, because this is a cut edge and I haven't, I don't want to scratch my paint, although it's quite hard because it's salt wash and it's paint couture, I'm gonna use another piece of top sheet just to go over those edges and make sure they're really pressed down because I don't, I don't really want a kind of square section of my transfer lost. So I'm going to burnish, make sure there's no air bubbles. Because although we're going to distress, I don't want it lifting in the places that I don't want it to. How do you decide which burnishing tool to use? Do you know what? To be honest, I flip between the two. Um, and the lollipop sticks that come in the packet are perfectly fine. This one can be quite handy if you've got, um, you know, draw inserts and little bits. It's thinner. They are, the, the, the tools are thinner. It's difficult to show on the camera there, isn't it? Show you down there. No, that's not. It's just a bit thicker, so it really just, you know, is. but I, I often have both and switch between the two. France, you're thinking stenciling, but the colour is wrong. I put it over stain. It went a bit green. Oh, no. Oh. So you're having a bit of a frustrating one then. Um, let's crack on with this piece. Uh -huh. I'm just going to stand up so that I make sure that my patterns, my pieces match up because looking at it from above, you can just see 
the match better. Well, I can anyway. Oh, how gorgeous does that look? Lovely. Lovely, lovely. this piece on. I'm just going to do that trick again where that join I'm going to use an extra piece of top sheet to get that seam so that I'm not going to scratch the, the transfer that I've already just pieced the piece I've just done. So we don't want to damage the paint work and we don't want to be scraping up the work that we've just done. So that's that edge. I might have to do that again in a second but we can um Mas, uh, Mariella, hi, hi from Barry, I think. I'm just going to trim along that edge because I didn't cut quite straight there. And although it's on the back, I want it to be relatively tidy there. Lisa, what paint is that again? I'm using Paint Couture on this piece. So I'm also a brand ambassador for Paint Couture. Um, but it, it does work very, very well with the redesign with Prima Transfers. It has a built-in top coat. So it's got a really nice smooth finish. Even with this texture, it doesn't feel chalky. Sydney, hello from, oh goodness me. Ah. Oh. You, these, some of these places, I don't want to get the pronunciation wrong. Saskatchewan? Oh, no, I'm sure that's wrong. That sounds wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Canada, hi. <laughs> Hola. Hola. Ross, hello. <laughs> I've only just seen you. I'm not sure if that's, you've only just found me or if that's an old comment and it's only just come through. We never know with Facebook, do we? <laughs> I think, I think, um, Glynis, hello, my lovely. How are you? What are you working on this week? Is it that Liebus Chester drawers that you showed earlier? Diane from Colorado, hello. Please say my name. Uh, Naveen, I think that's Naveen has just asked me to say hello. Rose, you slept in. Oh, no. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you obviously needed it. <laughs> okay. So we're back to this little edge is going to be layered. So we might have to work a little bit harder, but not too much. And it's coming up nicely. And we've got a little little leaf section there. Just make sure that you've got that edge. And as you're pulling back your top sheet from all of the other bigger pieces, you really want to make sure that that leaf point is stuck down so that it doesn't lift and rip. Just making sure. Oh, ah, lovely. Someone's told me how to say it. Sas catch you one. Sus catchy one, thank you. Um, Jade, I have a question. Is it durable? Does it need varnish? Yes, you absolutely need to protect these on furniture. You do. So this will be, once I've done everything that we're gonna do, I will be using um, Paint Shores flat top coat on this particular one. I, like I said, my whole aim on this piece is to make it look like it's stone, sat around in a barn for a while. I don't want it to have a sheen um, that satin, a satin finish would give me. I want it to stay almost basically looking as it is now, but protected. So yes, I will be using a flat top coat on this particular piece. You can use wax. If you go onto the Facebook Redesign with Prima group, there's a really great file section. And in there, there's a list of all of the recommended brands of top coat um, that brand, the whole brand ambassador team have used. They're trialed, they're tested, we know they work, they, we know they play nicely with the transfers. 
Erin. This is one of your favourites. The size of the flat. I know, they're just such big, bold florals, aren't they? They're awesome. So we're down to our last piece. I'm just going to use this one. Just going to even cover a bigger area. And where it's got a thinner, a thinner end, I feel like I can control it a little bit more in some of these places where the texture is. And just rub into it a little bit more. But we're nearly there. I hear my daughter giggling somewhere, but I'm not really sure where. Making sure I'm not... Jade, you're welcome. burnish make sure we've got no air bubbles like I've said I want to make sure it's sticking to all that I've got a little tiny air bubble there I've got it. I'm just popping that with a I just happen to have a nail there so if you have got some air bubbles use a craft knife don't drag it through just kind of do a pin prick and I'm, I'm only, I really don't normally use a nail, it's just what I had to hand. Um, and then just rub it down. Don't drag anything through it because you could drag the transfer with it. It's cute, isn't it? I, I'm really, I, I absolutely love, adore the subtlety of these pink, dusky pink flowers, dusty, dusky. Okay, I'm gonna take a sanding pad. This might seem radical, because we're always so worried about these transfers looking perfect, aren't we? I've got a nice rough sanding pad. I've already knocked my salt wash back a little bit, but because I've still got some high points, that's where I'm gonna be, that's where this is gonna rub off to. I'm going to lift the table up in a minute and just show you the difference. So this piece I haven't done, this piece I've done. So we have got a bit of dust there. You can see it most on the brighter pink flower, so I'm just going to lift that up. So can you see here all these little lighter highlighted parts where I have rubbed that back to? So it just makes it look like it's been on the piece of furniture for years and years. You can see a little bit in the in the paler flower, not so much. Whereas over here we haven't done this bit yet. So it's it's still like a, a solid colour. So let's get on and do that purple piece. I'm not sure you can see what I'm doing. And I'm really quite, I'm being quite um, vigorous with my sandpaper. I want it to be... Oh, lovely. I'm loving how it's knocked the colour back because I wanted these bolder colours to give it some grounding, but I didn't want them to be intense like they were. So look how that's pulled through on the purple flower. Can you see where it's, the texture is really, really pulling through? Just knock some of that dust away. And it's just, it's just taken the vibrancy away. They're beautiful. I know they're beautiful, but I just, for this piece, I wanted that just knocked back a bit. And I absolutely love that. Okay. 
So I just need to get a brush to not to waft that dust out of the way. And then we can just do the last, what we're doing for time. We're doing really well for time. So I'm just using a, a, a really old, you kind of cheap chip brush. What is the grit of the sanding pad? That is a very, very good question. Oh, do you know what? I didn't think I was gonna be able to tell you. It's actually not as rough as I thought. It says medium, and they're classing that as 120 to 180. But you could go, I would, you could go higher than that. If you really wanted to be harsh, you could do maybe an 80, 80 or 100. But this, is, um, this isn't a brand new pad either. I'm just going to do a bit more through that flower. There. Okay. Judy, you don't know if you'd have the bravery to do this. I know. Do you know what, though? It's... How cool is it looking? And let's do the next stage. So I'm going to get my, my paint control, Charlotte Grey. I'm going to get a bit of kitchen towel or shop rag or whatever it is that you use so this is a really it's quite a, a neutral it is quite a neutral so scary to do yes you've got to just bite the bullet and go for it and because the salt wash finish is random your sanding finish is going to be random and you have to just go with that but because we've got the the little, the Vera at the ballet is poking through and it really ties in nicely with the pale dusky pinks here. Barb, you could always try a finer paper and a lighter touch to start. Absolutely, if you're nervous, you could start light and then go heavier. So what I'm gonna do is wet a bit of kitchen roll, kitchen towel, shop rag. I'm going to pop a little bit of paint on to it. And I'm going to have another piece of rag because I don't want this to be going on thick. I want this, I want to kind of put it on and, and then I'm going to take it straight back off. And I'm just going to dab over the top. And that is all I'm going to do. Just to make it even more washed out. I don't want it thick on all of the sections. I want some areas to have more colour than others. Can you see how we've gone like a real whitewash texture over the top as well? So we're really layering up what we've got here. I've just realised it's not Gracie playing and laughing. It's my neighbour and they've got their grandnephew visiting, I think, by the sounds of it. So because I've used this in my top coat anyway it tones in nicely if you wanted to do this I would recommend you using one of the colors you've obviously used in your project already I'm just going to knock those greens back a little bit too much on just get another clean paper towel wet that and it will it will bring bring back more than more than you've already been able to take off I don't need to put too much on my pale pink flowers because they're already pale Sharia, it's it's really sweet, isn't it? Really sweet. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to go with a classic. It's eternal, of course. So I'm going to add. Oh, it's very warm in my workshop. All of a sudden, I'm going to tilt my little table back. Diane, you love the look. You've got to remember how to do it. Well, it's always going to be there available as a video. So can you see my mould? You can, but I can't. I'll have to lean, lean down a little bit. So I'm going to use Eternal. This is less about it being a glitzy, glamoury finish. We don't want 
glitz and glamour and shine. This is this is like a real vintage. I literally just want to touch as if it's just poking through. You know, a bit of the faded grandeur kind of feel about it. So if I hold that up, can we see? I think I need to go a bit heavier handed than that. Hi from France. Vonna, you're loving this technique. Thank you. Yeah, I think we need to go a little bit heavier. That's a bit better, isn't it? Eternal, Wilfred, it's, I think it's everyone's favorite, isn't it? What I love about Eternal is it works for vintage. It's added over this finish here. It gives it, it's giving it a really crusty, nice looking finish there. It's great on, um, it is great for the glamour and the glitz. It works very well for that. I just think it's the most perfect gold tone for such a variety of finishes that you want to create. So I, as I said, I'm, I'm really wanting this to look like, it's just, you know, like if you rubbed over something that had dust and dust was on everything else, but you just rubbed the tops and I want that gold to peak. Whoops, sorry, those of you on Facebook that got that. You see, it's just poking through. Instagram, there we go, that's a better angle for you. Okay. And while I'm here, I'm gonna add just some little bits here and there on my edges, which you probably aren't gonna see actually, so I can do that later. But it's just a case of, you know, I might stick a bit across the top, I might put a little bit poking through on some of my crusty pieces. Let's turn it up like that, let's move it back a bit. Let's just pop a little bit here because this one's sitting quite nicely. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay, so we'll do some more of those. We might highlight a bit of the flowers with some Eternal. Oh, that's really pretty. Let me show you. The texture that's creating is phenomenal. Can I show you that piece there? Can you see that section there that I've just put, put that Eternal on? And it's just highlighting it a little bit, but it's not, it still looks crusty. It still has that age look. Francie, lovely. Thank you. Okay. So, like I said, you can, you know, pop some through the flowers. I don't want to put too much through the flowers. It's kind of more, it'll pick up those high points where I want it to little bit through there I mean this is this is about just playing around and you know you having a go just having a bit of fun and just a bit of experimentation just highlighting a little bit here and there it's very much a faded grandeur kind of feeling to this piece hopefully <laughs> Roz, it is old and crusty. It looks old and crusty. And do you know when I got it, I don't know if anyone follows my page, it had obviously none of the moulds and it was kind of, it wasn't mid-century. It didn't have nice elegant legs. They're just sort of there. It kind of didn't fall into any camp and I wanted to give it a camp to sit in. So I think I've, I've done that. I think I've achieved that. I'm really, really pleased. I hope you've enjoyed what we've done today. And I hope maybe it's given you a different spin on how to use the transfers and that you can distress them back. They can be added over a textured surface. You've seen it wasn't too difficult. Um, we've done a little bit of paint washing so you can, you can paint over them. You can wash, you know, do paint washes. Just seen a bit there that I want to. And you can just keep keep working on it until you're until you're happy. Okay, perfectly lovely, love it. So just as a recap, the moulds that we've added on here are from the Thornton Medallion. So that's that piece on the front, and then the scroll. So that's the whole of that mould was used. And English Garden, not the centerpiece on this one, just the little scrolls on this one. And that's, so that's the mould section. I've used Paint Control Vera at the Ballet mixed with the salt wash. And then the top, the top colours were Charlotte Grey, <clears throat> excuse me, and Peace. <clears throat> Sorry about that. 
um, and, I, and I dabbed them just to create a stony looking finish. Um, yes, France is really quite different to my normal with the texture and everything, so loving that. And then we've used the, let me find the tube, Lush Floral 2 transfer. So there's, I've got plenty of this left. There is so many flowers to use on this, I've got plenty left. So this is definitely, if you're using it on smaller projects like this, you could get two to three out of this one transfer. Um, what else do we use? And we use Decor Wax in Eternal, just to highlight, add to the crustiness, but the, give it a little bit of glam and a little bit of that faded grandeur type feeling. And I will top coat this with flat top coat from Paint Couture because I want to maintain that dry, flat looking finish. I don't want a sheen on this. Um, okay, if you haven't already, pop over to Gracie's house, drop me some love over there. Um, this, is, this is the time of the day that you will see me next week, You've got a cheeky extra one for me because I'm going to be away for a few weeks. So we've got some, um, I've doubled up on a couple of weeks. So next week you're going to get two sessions from me. I've got to start planning. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and I really appreciate you spending your time with me and I hope you've enjoyed my project today. Thanks a lot guys. Bye.